Soak your cane, I would say three to five strands at a time, in room temperature water. Don't use hot water or cold water. It will raise the uh, little hairs on the underneath side of the cane. And also, if it's in the water too long, it will discolor the cane. It will become a real gray, not very pretty color. The tools you're going to need are an awl with a nice sharp end. You'll need some nice cutters. And you'll also need some caning pegs. The first thing you need to do is determine the center holes along the back and along the front edge of the chair. Once you do that, you're ready to start. You notice that the cane has a porous underneath side and a glossy finished side on the top. You want to make sure that you keep the glossy side always on the top and the pore side on the underneath side. Take your peg out and you'll put your cane down in about three inches. Secure it with a peg. Okay, you're gonna come along the front side and find the corresponding hole along the front and put it down in the hole. Bring that through. And you make it kind of tight, not uh, horribly loose, but not extremely tight either. Just a little taut. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is come up through the next hole. And you notice how I'm just keeping the cane in my fingers at all times. This will help to keep the cane from uh, twisting up on you. And you make sure that it's flat along the bottom underneath. Take this peg and put it over to secure the cane. And then you're going to go to the back hole and put it down in next to the beginning one. Pull that through. Secure that. And then you're going to come up through the next hole and go on until you get to the edge. Now as you see, um, I've come to the corner here and in most chairs there's going to be more holes in the front than there are along the back and so we're going to have to compensate and skip holes along the side in order to uh, make this an even line. So instead of the uh, corner hole, I'm going to come up into the side hole my cane is still damp, and then I'm going to come up here. When I come along the next hole, I'm going to skip some, and I'll show you how to determine which hole to put it in. Up here along the front. Now I, I hold the cane up. Of course, I'm not going to go there. Or there but that looks pretty good because it's the straightest line without getting too close and it still is not covering up that hole right there so it looks to me like that would be the best hole to go in and then you do the same thing with the next hole I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go into that hole because it's an even and it's not covering that one up. So that's the next hole I'll go in. Okay, I finished on this side and so I'm going to go in the back hole again, bring it about three inches along, secure it with a peg, and I'm going to work this half of the seat and I'm going to put them in the same holes as I put these along the edge. So I will be skipping holes along the left side as well. Okay, we finished step one, which is front to back. Now we're ready for step two. And I'm going to start in the right hand corner uh, with a new fresh piece of cane. And I'm going to secure it with the peg. These are all going to be horizontal from side to side. I'm going to come across and use the corresponding hole across the seat. 
pull that through. And then we're going to work our way up the chair this in the same way that we did step one, only we're going side to side. Now you notice on this chair it's curved along the front here. So if I were to stop my strands going from side to side, it would end up being a huge gap between the first strand and the, the binder. So what I'm going to do is skip some holes and put another row in. I'll probably skip two holes along the side here and then put it in the corresponding hole on the other side. Okay, we just finished step two and we're going to start now with step three. I'm going to start in this corner here and step three is exactly the same step as step one only you are going to go to the right of step one just ever so slightly. I'll show you how this will look. I have really long strands. It's nice to have some long strands. It saves on all tying off in the ends the very last step. I'm going to come back up like we've been doing. Pull it on through. And then, as you see, I'm going to go right to the right of step one. And I'm going to keep going until I duplicate all the strands that I've done in step one. Okay, we finished step three. We've gone just to the right of step one, so they're all laying on the top. We're going to begin step four, and this is where the real weaving part of it starts. I'm going to come in back here, and I'm going to just go under step one over step three. I always start it out here, and then I don't have to pull the cane all the way through. Under step one over step three and see I have my one hand underneath one on top and I do maybe two or three at a time and then I pull it tight push up every time I pull them together just to make sure that they're nice and even This is the most tedious step there is. And you have to make sure that your cane that you're weaving with is damp. It'll help to tighten it back up when you when the chair's finished too if the cane is damp. And it won't break and split when you keep it damp. I'm going to push that over a little bit. Come up there, see so I'm only doing three at a time. And then after each one, I'm pushing them all together. And then when you get, you'll get some over the wood. This is where the awl comes in handy. You just take the awl and lift that up and push this through. And then I just put it down in that hole and secure it with the peg. And then I'm going to also um, mimic step two with step four. It's the same vertical or horizontal strands that you're doing here. Come up into this hole. Just 
scare it with the peg. And then I'll grab my awl and lift up. Might you want to use your finger or a nail or something. And I'm going to continue to go under step one over step three. I'll show you when I come back the other way a different method. You'll develop your own ways of uh, pulling it over, up and down. My hands are small so it's easy for me to um, get my hands in here but if you know some guys do it and it's hard for them to get their fingers through here they will develop their own method of doing it but this is just to give you a few little tips. Okay, I'm going to come back and show you a different method. And also I wanted to point out that this strand of step four, it comes to the south of step two. So it's wrong if you put it up over this way. You have to come to the south side of the chair in order for this to work right with step five and six. Sometimes I like to just work from the top and I'll just pull it in and use my nail to get in between there. You might only want to do one at a time and also remember to keep your hands on the cane at all times. This will prevent it from twisting. So I'm just going to carry on and I'm going to do every row on step four as I have for step two and then we'll be on to step five. Okay, I've gone over all of step three and under all of step one. So step four is completely done. We're on to step five now. This is where we are going to go over two strands and under two strands. We are going to go over strands from front to back, under strands from side to side. And we're going to start right here in this corner. So we're going to go over those two strands, under that, from side to side, over these two strands, under, over those, under those, over and under until we go all the way down to the side. You can push it up from underneath if you'd like. And you just need to pay careful attention. It'll it'll give you a perfect diagonal. If you've done steps one through four correctly, it should slide right through. Okay, and then I'm going to put it right in that hole. You can cut those little hairs off later. Now we're going to use the very corner to put the strand down in. And I'm going to work the back side of the chair first. You can do either one, but I do the back side just because it's, to me, it's the hardest to do. Now when we come up here, I'll show you what we're going to do with our things called fish heads. And we will have a few of these along the edges and in each corner of the chair. Make sure it's smooth under there. Now you might want to do just one at a time. 
over, front to back, under, side to side. When you're starting out, it might just be good to do one, but as you get more adept at it and you know what you're doing better, you can do two or three at a time. I work on the top of the chair, but you can put your hand underneath and push the strands up like that. Cane's wet, so it makes that noise. Okay, and as we're coming down here to the front, we are going to go into this same hole. And it forms something that looks like a fish head. And that's why we call them fish heads. I'll show you closely. See right there. So you're putting two strands into that one hole. You do this because it's wider here than it is in the back. And then also, you notice up here, they're going completely over. Like, picture this as being a little square. Right like that and the cane is laying right across like it's forming the first part of the X. You'll want to have X's all the way on the back and on the front and a few places on the side as well. Okay, I'm just going to continue working the back side of the chair first and um, then we'll work the front side. Always going over strands from front to back, under strands from side to side. Okay, I finished the back side of the step five on this chair, and then I'm going to come and do the front side. And you can see in the corner, I have doubled up again to form that fish head. Secure it with a peg. And then I'm going to come up through this hole. And then what's going to happen is, when I come all the way down here to this side, I will double up in that hole, and that will form another fish head as well. I want to show you, too, along the edges here, I skipped holes. I skipped that hole, and I skipped that hole. Because you, won't, you wouldn't be able to get underneath there, so you just go to the next hole. Okay, so I'm going to keep working my way up towards the front. As you can see, I finished all of step five. I have doubled up here and here and here. And I've skipped holes on this side, here, here, and up here. And so on step six, I will be doubling in those holes on this side and skipping them on this side. So with step six, I'm going to turn the chair a little bit. I'm going to start in this corner here. And we're going to do the absolute opposite of step five. We are going to go under strands, two strands, or three actually at this point, from front to back, and over strands from side to side. Remember to keep your cane wet, damp, as you're working. I'm going to work our way all the way up to the corner. Okay, and so I've worked my way all the way up to this corner. And I'm going to go over that, and do you see that X that we've made there? We're going to have X's in every one of those squares. And like I said before, it doesn't matter if you work your the front side or the back side. Um, 
at whatever you prefer to do. As long as you just remember to go under strands from front to back, over strands from side to side. So I'm going over those and under those. And then once you get the first line in here, you can use that as your guide going both ways. So I'll just work my way up here to the corner again. And in this corner, I will have another fish head because I'm going to double up in that corner. Remember, you can either do just one, two, three, four, however many that you feel comfortable with doing. But remember also, I have my hands always making sure that the strand is not twisted. And then I'm going to go under this, this one on the end here. going to put it into that hole to make that fish head. I'm just going to keep continuing on with step six. Okay, we're all done with step six. And as you can see, I have X's all along the front. I have some X's along the side, all the way along the back and on this side as well, just a few. So now we're ready to bind off the chair. So what I'm using is a piece of four millimeter narrow binding cane. It's cane, it's just cut a little bit wider than regular cane. It has the porous side on the out, on the underneath, and then the finished side on the top. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there because we're going to peg that at the very, very end. What I'm going to do is take a piece of cane. I'm going to put it down in there, another three inches on the bottom. I'm going to put the other end down into that same hole. and I'm going to just loop it over that to hold it in place. Notice my thumb is right here holding it down to give it a nice uh, tight flat area. I'm going to come up the next hole just like we did in the other steps and I'm going to loop it around and I do this I don't pull it all the way up and then bring it loop it down because sometimes it's hard to get the cane through so I pull up, and then I pull down here underneath. Pull up, pull down, pull up, pull down, until I get to the very end. And I'm going to put my finger underneath the loop, hold this with my thumb again, and then pull down on it. I'm going to continue to go around the rest of the chair in the same manner. Now remember we also soaked the binder because if you don't soak it it would probably break but we need to soak it because we're going to have to come around this edge without breaking it off and, and uh, putting a peg there. Most chairs have a square and you just use four pieces of binder. This one because it's um, this uh, shape we use two pieces of binder, one along the back and then one completely around the chair. Now you see as I go up through this hole, I'm going to place it there, put my thumb down to hold it where it's supposed to go, and push it down tight. Now the next hole will also be a little bit awkward because it's curved. Put it down in first before bringing it all the way up. So I'm pulling, and when I get to the point where it's completely stopped, I put my thumb here and my finger underneath to hold it, and then I pull down. And see how nicely that lays down? 
I want to continue along the front and do the same on the other curve on the other side. Okay, I've bound the entire chair. See how flat the edges are around the corners. And I'm going to cut this off a little bit on an angle. And I'm just going to tuck that down into the corner there. I'm going to cut off the remaining strip in the back by sticking a edge of it down into the corner. And then I'm going to measure over here and just cut that off there. Then I'm going to continue with the um, wrapping of the binder. This first one I'm going to go the opposite way just because it's left over from the other side and I think it will lay down flatter. But then I'm going to continue going around the rest of the way the same as I've done before by coming up might be a little more difficult because a lot of chairs have rungs really close to the top of the seat here, but I'm just going to have to find a way to work around those rungs. You might have to, um, if the seat is, the holes are plugged up, you might have to just use your awl and just stick your awl in a hole and wiggle it around to make sure that it's um, clear. I'm just going to continue here along the edge in the same way I've done all the way around the rest of the chair. Okay, I've finished the whole back and I'm going to clip a little bit off on a slant and I'm going to tip it over and put it into that hole right there. And we're done with, with the binding. Okay, now we have all these little ends left over from our caning so we're going to have to tie these off. This is the last step other than the pegs. And this is where your awl really comes in handy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little pr pressure point there. I'm going to lift that cane up. I'm going to come through underneath. And before I pull it all the way through, I'm going to come back through that loop. Pull this tight. And then like you're wrapping a package, put your finger there and pull it tight. Take your awl. Sometimes you won't have to use your awl. It might already have enough room for that cane to get through. Go back through, pull it tight, put your finger and pull. I'm going to go along the whole rest of the chair doing using that same method. And I'm making, I'm putting the ends towards the inside of the seat. Sometimes it's not totally possible to do that, but as much as you can, make the ends come in towards the inside of the chair so that they're not little ends sticking out here in case people reach under to pull their chair up or something. Once that's done all the way around the chair, you take your nippers and you just clip them off. That's what's so nice about these nippers. They're slanted and sharp and so you can get in pretty close. And notice they're sticking down into the chair. So I'm going to continue around the rest of the chair and then we're ready for pegs. Okay now we're going to peg the corner holes uh, just to finish the whole chair off. You might want to use your awl to just ream it through there a little bit. I'm going to take a piece of round reed and I'm just going to stick it in. And then I'm going to cut off the top. Take my little hammer. Hammer it down in. Then I'll do the same with the other side. There you have it, the seven steps to a hand cane chair. Um, you might want to take your little nippers and just cut off the little hairs that may be sticking up along the edges. Um, but other than that, pretty good job. Beautiful seat.